Hello everybody and welcome back to the Martian in Kerbal Space Program and we're already on Duna, well not really on Duna but around Duna and this here is, well it's one of the final pieces of the puzzle of what needs to be on the planet before the crew can arrive. So in here in this really huge fairing are some more parts for the habitation module, well module, those are the modules and in the end it will be a nice little habitat. Okay, so we're now already descending through the atmosphere of Duna. And we're about to release the fairing. Well, first we have to burn a little bit to slow down. There we go. Whoa! Some explosions. Well, nothing crucial. Looks fine. Okay, let's get rid of that thing that stabilized everything. Okay, we're now on our own with the final center column functioning as the thing that carries the parachute and the control module. And some rocket engine and fuel to slow the descent down, because since Juno's atmosphere is so thin, you rarely can land with parachutes alone, ouch. And something else exploded. Okay, we've lost a mystery goo container and we lost the engine. Well, we don't need the engine anymore and we have enough mystery goo containers left. So, time to get the rovers to Duna. Yeah, this here is the rocket that sends the rovers to Duna. Well, I will have to send two rockets because I try to send some kind of dual fairing construction thingy that looked like a very angry moose, but it really failed and in the end it was not that good to look at. So we're already in orbit, setting our maneuver node, and voila! Due to the magic of editing, we're already in Duna. Well, not in Duna, fortunately on our way onto Duna. Okay, making some final burns. This was way over engineered. I did not use a lot of fuel. That, well, not the entire fuel that I could have used to get here to Duna, so I have very, very much fuel left to slow down to the surface, but we're not going to need all of it. So here we go, that's the rover. And let's get rid of that rocket engine, let's rename it so we remember which one is which because there's a rover run and rover two. Very creative naming. Okay, you can see the parachute array up top. This thing also has a uh, some radial engines included to slow the descent down once again. Okay, here we go. Parachutes opening. This is looking good. And firing the engines. Please land safely. Yes. Oh well, we have some broken wheels. So this hampers our maneuverability a bit. But it should work, and we can always repair those later when the crew arrives. Sometime. Okay, here we are already at the habitation modules. And I'm trying to get this into position to dock with it. But due to, well, all those broken wheels, I really have a hard time really have a hard time trying to get to dock this and yeah. This is not as easy as it may look because the entire left side is not really responding very well to steering inputs since half of the left side wheels are broken. So there is not a lot of precision going on over here. So I decided, well, let's get the second rover down there. Maybe that will help. Okay, there it is, the second rover, and once again we have a lot of fuel left, 
and we just decided to dump it on Duna. Well, isn't that what humans always do? They go to a foreign place and they just mess it up because, well, it's not home, so who cares? Okay, well, but those are Kerbals, not humans, so maybe this is all a big misunderstanding. So the second rover is heading down to the surface. Fortunately, we're very close to our landing zone. Once again, firing engines and... Yeah, we lost some wheels as well. But it looks a little bit better than the other one, so this thing here should maneuver a lot better than the first rover. You can see I keep those uh, rocket pods up top. Reason being, those still have some remote control capabilities, so they have some uh, command pods. And if I would drop them, then I would only have the cupola model up front, and without any pilots, those would be useless. You can see here my base has some retractable gear. Why, you may ask? Well, that makes it easier to dock with the rest of the habitat. So I roll the rovers, I reverse the rovers to the habitat. I dock with the habitat and then I fold the gear up so it's not in the way. Okay, second rover is docked, first rover is docked, we now have a nice habitat train that's going to head, well, about 10 kilometers to the main habitat module. Okay, so... Once again, uh, my video recording software kind of had some issues and this is a very very choppy recording. Apologies for that. Fortunately I'm not really checking these things up until I try to edit it, so yeah, sorry about that. Okay, now we're already at the habitat and you can see here the lag is great in this one. Oh well. Okay, let's try to get that module to the habitat. To do some adjustments, I had to lock the steering and change the, the wheels that would use the motors. So I would not have any problems while navigating those 10 kilometers up until the habitat. Okay. Now we're trying to dock this thing, get in there. In my opinion, ground docking is harder than space docking, to be honest. There we go, now we can fold that wheel up and the HAB module is now standing on its own legs. Okay, second one coming in. Even though the rover wheels are partially broken, it still works. But I don't ask how often times I had to reverse and readjust because I really had to use a big turning circle with this contraption. Okay, rover 2 and rover 1 attaching to the habitat. And yes, that is a success. We have a habitat. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.